Hi, this is Nasser Amash. I'm one of the adult congenital heart disease specialists at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, City, Minnesota. And it will be my pleasure today to talk about coronary artery anomalies. Coronary artery anomalies are common congenital anomalies that you can see on CT scan or coronary angiography, and they consist of ectopic coronary artery origin, or coronary artery aneurysm, or fistulae, or bridges. Myocardial bridges are one of the most common congenital anomalies noted. Most of these anomalies, fortunately, are benign, but however, some are life-threatening, such as ectopic coronary artery origin, which is going to be the main topic of discussion today. And the reason why is, it, is that anomalous coronary arteries constitute the second most common cause of sudden death in young athletes, as you can see from this paper from Barry Marin more than 20 years ago. If you take young athletes less than 35 years old who die suddenly unrelated to trauma and you do autopsies, the most common anomaly is that of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy followed by coronary artery anomalies and among those is ectopic coronary artery origin. The two most malignant Ectopic coronary artery anomalies are anomalous left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery and anomalous coronary artery from the opposing coronary sinus. Alcapa, which is the anomalous left coronary artery com coming from the pulmonary artery, is an anomaly that is noted in children but also in adults. The average age at the time of presentation in adult is around 42 years. These patients come in with heart failure, ventricular arrhythmias, sudden death or ischemic mitral regurgitation. In Alcapa, the left coronary artery comes up from the pulmonary artery. So when you do a characterization in these patients, you inject the right coronary artery, it will be dilated, and you have reversal of flow in the left coronary system, creating more like a left to right shunt that empties into the PA. So these patients depend predominantly on the right coronary artery circulation to supply the whole myocardium. And at times, develop ischemia in the left ventricle with myocardial infarction, ischemic mitral regurgitation, ventricular tachycardia, or sudden death. When we see them in adults, most of the time, we do recommend surgery unless somebody is of certain age and really is not interested with normal ventricular function. But in the vast majority of cases, all Alcapa anomalies needs to be considered for surgical intervention. When you talk about the more common anomalies is that of the ectopic coronary artery coming from the opposing coronary sinus with an intra course, whether it's the left coming from the right or the right coming from the left. And those can see, be seen on echocardiography or CT scan, as you can see on these images. This is, for example, an anomalous right coming from the left seen on a CT scan with an intra-arterial course between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. And you can see that on echocardiography, especially in young adults. The other anomaly that is of more concern is anomalous left coming from the right, as you can see on the CT scan, and this anomalous left is coming from the right coronary artery itself, not from the right sinus. You can see that on echocardiography as well. The problem is what to do with these patients when they come to see you in the clinic. This is a 49-year-old with dilated aorta, as you can see on CT scan, who has an anomalous right coming from the left coronary sinus with an intra-arterial intramural course. So he comes to you with important question, what's the risk of sudden cardiac death? What additional testing do I need before deciding on intervention? And what kind of intervention? Do you put a stent or do you do surgery and what kind of surgery? And what will happen to me after intervention? These are very important questions. There are certain facts that you need to know about coronary artery anomalies. Although majority of associated sudden cardiac death occurred during or shortly after exercise, sudden cardiac death occurred at rest in around 50% of the patients that we know. The clinical symptoms such as chest pain and dyspnea might help in that risk gratification, but after 50% of patients who died with coronary anomalies, 
had had no prior symptoms before. And that's the dilemma when you talk about who to select for intervention. EKGs and stress tests are not reliable unless they are markedly abnormal. A negative stress test does not exclude the possibility of a significant dynamic obstruction related to an ectopic coronary artery with an intra-arterial intramural course. And the understanding of the interplay between the anatom anatomic feature of that ectopic coronary artery and physiological impact of that is important in risk stratification. When you talk about ectopic coronary artery with an intra-arterial course, one of the most important information that you have to get from the CT scan, and that has an added value over echocardiography, is the following. Is that artery intramural, which means it is coming off within the wall of the aorta, within the wall, or is it extramural, coming in between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, but it's outside the wall of the aorta, or is intramyocardial, just as a my myocardial bridge. That's a very important findings on CT scan, and if the report doesn't tell you what it is, you have to look for, some, for a radiologist, an expert radiologist who can differentiate between those three. Because the most serious anomalies are those with not only an intra-arterial course, but also intramural course within the wall of the aorta. Because what happens in these patients, as you can see those, those graphics, as we exercise, there's expansion of the aorta, as well as expansion of the pulmonary artery, but it's the expansion of the aorta with this coronary artery within the wall of the aorta that caused the coronary artery to be obstructed and causing potentially sudden death. And you can see here in this electron microscopy of a, an anomalous right within the wall of the aorta after emerging from the left coronary sinus. So there are some very important questions that you need to ask a radiologist. Is the coronary artery that's anomalous dominant? Does it have a slit-like opening like in this autopsy specimen? You can see an anomalous right coming from the left in the autopsy. You can see the slit-like opening in the proximal portion of the right coronary artery on autopsy. Does it have an acute angle of takeoff? And typically, with the slit-like opening, you do have an acute angle of takeoff, but not, every, not everybody has it. Again, is it an intramural versus extramural versus intramyocardial segment? And the length of the intramural segment or intramyocardial segment? Because we know based on our experience that the longer the intramural segment, the more problematic it can be. There's also an added value of intravascular ultrasound over CT scan and risk stratification in some patients. Because intravascular ultrasound can identify how much compression there is at rest and with exercise, or you can also give dobutamine, atropine, and saline to, to provoke this. And you look for areas of stenosis and minimal diameter at rest or with exercise or stress. This is a 55-year-old patient with anomalous right coronary artery coming from the left and chest pain. His uncle has died suddenly in the 40s, and he had a negative stress test. If you can look at this coronary angiography with intravascular ultrasound, we're looking at the ultrasound more distal in the right and coming more proximal, and you can see how the surface area goes down significantly. When we this gave this patient adenosine, he had chest pain, and the cross-sectional area significantly decreased. He ended up having surgery. So when you talk about risk gratification for anomalous coronary artery origin, I would like to summarize it as follows. For anomalous left coming from the pulmonary artery or from the uh, right, surgical repair should be considered after shared decision making with the patient. The, the issue is more problematic in anomalous right, keeping in, in, in mind that anomalous right is six times more common than anomalous left. And here you have to be a bit more selective. Age of the patient is important, and I put in here 35 years because this is what the data suggests. Patients who die following exercise, age less than 35, you can 
commonly see anomalous coronary artery. In the older population, the garden variety coronary artery disease is the most common. The value of the exercise stress test and Holter is, a, is good if it is positive. If it's negative, it doesn't help. Echo is good in identifying the coronary artery anomalies, especially in young ch children, but also help assess ventricular function, mitral regurgitation, and also is good in diagnosis al kappa. Again, as discussed earlier, there's an added value of CT, coronary angiography, and at times intravascular ultrasound. Repair is generally considered when somebody has symptoms of angina, syncope, ventricular arrhythmia, or ischemic left ventricular dysfunction. But the, in an asymptomatic patient who was noted to have incidental anomalous right coronary artery coming from the left, then we have to focus a bit on the anatomy. Does the patient have an intramural segment? That's the riskiest. How long is the intramural segment? Does it have the slit-like opening and the acute angle of takeoff from the left sinus? And it need be demonstrate significant coronary artery compression by intravascular ultrasound at rest, or with provocation with exercise, or with saline, atropine, and dobutamine. And in some young adults who are really involved in strenuous exercise, it is reasonable to consider surgical repair as far as long as you have a surgeon who is really trained to perform the unroofing, but at, at times you can also consider coronary artery stenting in experience center. In the elderly patients or in patients who are not really interested in, in having any intervention or surgery, the best thing we can offer is avoidance of strenuous physical activity because we know 50% of these patients will have event during or shortly after exercise. We would ask them to abstain from competitive athletics, and that's not that hard in the elderly patients. There's a potential role for beta blockers, but that's not the proven benefits. So take home message. One, most coronary artery anomalies are benign, except for some with ectopic origin, as previously discussed. Understanding the relationship between anatomy and physiology is very important in risk stratification. And this is where the added value of stress testing, echo, CT scan, or intravascular ultrasound. We do have percutaneous or surgical treatment available in the selected patient needing intervention. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question regarding this subject, I'm providing my email address.